I ask you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter. I'll be reading verses 18 through 21. I was thinking of 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Have you thought about what Christ has done for you? To think about that verse, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That when we get saved, that Jesus Christ has placed us in a position that we are right with God, that we are forgiven of our sins, and that he has untied us so we can serve the Lord and it's God's will for us to live a life of righteousness. And we have the righteousness, the righteousness of God on us because of the blood of Jesus Christ. The life, uh, the, the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the righteousness of God on us. What a tremendous blessing it is that we have tonight just to be called by the name Christian. All right, Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter, beginning with verse 18 down through verse 21. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city, and unto the gate, of his pla the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of, the, of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father, we bow before you. We thank you, Lord, for this time to be in service. Uh, Father, we just praise you. And that's why we come to church, Lord. We want to meet with thee, and we, wanna, we have opportunity to fellowship together, and Lord, to join together in praising the precious name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we praise you today. And Lord, we, we just ask you that you'll help us uh, through this week to live every day for Christ, to be a blessing to others, to be an encourager, to be a strength to other people. We continue to pray for lost people to be saved, and we pray that you'll use us to win the lost for Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach tonight on the subject, Jesus and rebellion. You know, the scripture before us gives us a sad picture of what can happen when sin is allowed to have rule in a person's life. In human beings, I don't think there is any stronger love than a love for parents, godly parents who love their children. I don't think there's any stronger love than that in human beings. Yet we have a commandment from the Lord of how a situation of rebe a rebellious son is to be addressed. Now I think as we approach this, we have to understand that the Bible here is teaching, is teaching about godly parents who have done their best to teach and to help their, their, their child. Uh, they have tried to live a godly life, to, have an, to be an example before that, that young person. And they have done their best to love that young person, to counsel that young person. They have prayed when trouble came. They have prayed and done everything that they possibly know how to do over and over many times uh, to try to help that young person. That's the kind of parents I believe the Bible is talking about here. But we have this situation of the Bible telling us about how a totally rebellious child was to be handled in the Old Testament. And this is without, without doubt a quest, uh, without doubt a description of a young person who has gone out of control and is in complete rebellion. The, the Bible describes him as stubborn, rebellious, a drunkard, and a glutton. I understand this description to be of a young adult 
who's totally rebellious, who is completely stubborn, and belligerently refuses to listen to the counsel of his parents or anyone else. He lives by his own desires. He drinks. Today we would think of taking drugs. He has given over his own, appeti his own appetites and desires. The word gluttonous here I take to mean far more than just overeating and, and revelry. He has given himself over to his fleshly desires completely. He does whatever he wants to and refuses to listen to anybody, to refuses to listen to, to go by any rules he doesn't want to go by. There is a point that parents are commanded to bring that young person to the law, to the elders of the city, and say he is no longer a fit person to live in society. And we've seen here in the scripture tonight in the Old Testament, the punishment here was for the parents and the elders to, to stone, or at least the men, to stone that young person to death. Now today we don't stone people. Today that, we, that person would probably be incarcerated for whatever crime that they had done. But that was the punishment in the Old Testament. That is a, a sad story. It is a serious thing that we find here in the Scripture. And it's a story that should never happen. You know, if, if, and if people would give their life to Christ, and that's what I'm preaching on tonight, Christ and rebellion, the difference that Jesus Christ can make in people's lives, not just in adults, but the difference that Jesus Christ can make in young people's lives, oh, it doesn't matter, folks. Let me tell you, when, when people surrender their life to Jesus Christ, the hate and rebellion has to leave because hate and rebellion can't live in a heart where the Holy Spirit is. Christ makes a difference. So first of all, Jesus Christ is the answer for the causes of rebellion. In Matthew, the sixth chapter, <clears throat> Excuse me, in Matthew the 6th chapter, verses 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In, verse, in, in these verses, Jesus is speaking about things that, that cause anxiety in people's lives, the, the things that people worry about, basic needs that we have uh, in our life, things like food and clothing and shelter that people are overly concerned about. He's talking about uh, physical appearance. You know, some people really get concerned about uh, physical appearance. There's so much vanity in our world today. People are so concerned about the flesh and so concerned about uh, uh, the material things of life. He's talking about our personal needs. He's talking about those kinds of things that cause people so much anxiety uh, because they don't put their complete faith and their complete trust in the Lord. You know, Jesus' answer to problems of life is to be sure that our priorities are in the right place. And that, that you know, it applies to everybody. I think young people today, and I'm preaching primarily to young people tonight, but it applies to everybody, but I think young people have things that, that cause them great consternation. Young people get all concerned about grades sometimes. They worry about grades sometimes. There's a need to worry, I suppose. I see young girls get all concerned about boyfriends. And many times they get so concerned about boyfriends way before it's time to get concerned about boyfriends. Let me tell you something, young person. If you're in high school, uh, you've got plenty of time. Don't let the devil tell you that you've got to hurry this thing about marriage. You've got to hurry this thing about dating. Listen, you've got plenty of time to get married. And, and don't be pressured into doing something wrong because you're concerned that people won't like it. The same thing goes with young men. 